Hi, I'm Chris. I'm the practicing artist and what you see here behind me on my easel drafting table is a finished watercolor of a market scene that I took a photograph of when I was visiting Rome. And this is at the Campo di Fiorio. I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope that's correct. But in the upcoming video, I'm going to show you the steps I took to create this watercolor. Thanks for watching and remember above all, keep practicing. Good morning, welcome to the studio. Uh, it's a Monday morning, I'm tired. I don't know why, maybe it's that stationary bike back there because I kind of bike a lot in the morning. It's my physical warm up. it's my exercise and it keeps me uh, on top of things, it keeps me energized. And I think it's important if you're an artist or any kind of creative person to take some time out for yourself before you start hitting the canvas, the paper, the word processor, the pad if you're a writer, if you work in pen, sculpture, anything creative. Always take care of yourself and exercise first. And now that I've exercised, I have to get down to work on this particular piece here. And we're going to be doing a watercolor. And I'm going to uh, take some time to help you uh, see how I go about choosing my colors and working with paint, paper, and water. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this demonstration. All right, here is my dirty palette. Witness what you shouldn't do. Uh, I should be spraying it with this and keeping these wells damp and I haven't done that yet. So that's my next step is never paint with dry paint. Don't use paint that's cracked in the wells. Uh, I have students that come in and you could lift the paint with your fingernail, it's so dry. It doesn't work that way. You should always spray like I'm doing now. And you should always spray it flat like this. So it doesn't drip into each other. This is the first thing you do when you go into the studio is make sure that your paint palette is damp, that your wells are damp, refill the paint in your palette. Do not paint with paint that is cracked, that looks like clay or rocks or pebbles. It just won't work for you. So we're starting to lay color in on this large piece. It's not super big, it's 14 inches high and 20 inches wide, but there's a lot of little details on it. And I've been working on putting the warm colors in, the reds of the cherry tomatoes, and some of the tomatoes that are on the side. And I'm not sure I'm done with it. I like to put a light wash down first and then build my washes up from there. I use a lot of different colors. Let's zoom in here. On these tomatoes, I'm using a lemon yellow, a cadmium yellow, which is an orangey color, and I'm mixing that with an alizarin crimson. I also am using some purple, which is a mix of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson to get some of those darks and shadows on the tomatoes. And I use a color called opera. Now, let me pan over and show you. This is, that hot pink is opera and I use that opera as a wash to make some of these tomatoes pop. I also started to put some darks in where these tomatoes would be casting shadows as they're laying in the basket or on a table. So that's where we are at this stage of the watercolor. And the red is a nice contrast, a complementary color to the green of those onion tops. I've been working now on adding some color in this basket and I've put some color um, under the those cherry tomatoes there. Uh, it's a mixture of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue and I threw a little magenta in there here and there. That's and now these are all just initial washes and I also um, did a little bit more on the outline of the basket here. This one was darker than this one. This one is more in the shadows. And I was kind of losing my place, so I started adding those green stems on cherry tomatoes. And oddly enough, I think cherry tomatoes only have like five little green leaves on them, but that's what I'm sticking with. I had to put that in there because I was losing my place and covering it up with the brown from the basket. 
and um, these again are initial washes. I have a lot of little white spots in those tomatoes. Let me zoom in here a little bit. You can see them. That's going to be covered up when I do um, washes over that. What else have we done on this go around? I worked somewhat on these onions. I think they're onions. Maybe they're leeks. Maybe somebody could tell me. And that is, I'm trying to keep it as white as possible, but would, uh, keeping in mind that I want to add a little bit of color. Let me shift over here a little bit. And I'm using a burnt sienna and ultramarine blue for the shadows and a yellow ochre for some of the yellow in the onions. Again, these are just initial washes. It gives me room to build on. And these are going to be, I believe, yellow onions here. So I took some lemon yellow and some yellow ochre and threw that in there and just getting some initial washes. I want to have fun. <laughs> Even though I hate carrots, I want to have fun with the carrot tops, uh, which is a lot of green, a lot of uh, uh, frilly leaves. Let me see if I can pan over slowly here so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. I mean, that looks like it would be fun to do, but also kind of a challenge because you have to make sure that you leave enough light, white space, light colors, and then the darker values. I got some work done on the oranges, and these are the uh, first washes, although uh, some of these values I went a little more intense more intense chroma than I had intended but I'm kind of liking it and they balance sort of with the tomatoes I have larger tomatoes here I have to add more color to and again this is a slow process you work on a section at a time here's some more cherry tomatoes I added some green leaves to these also, kind of fiddled around a little bit with the carrot tops, the greens of the carrot. And there's a lot more left to do. And again, these are only the first passes. What I'm gonna work on next, and it looks like I'm losing focus a little bit. Let's try to correct that. Uh, these are roughly sketched squash blossoms which uh, they fry up in Italy I think specifically in Rome let me pan over here to the photograph reference and they'll be kind of fun to do because they're loose and they pretty much keep the same colors the yellows the greens a little bit of orange some purples I'm gonna use a lot of purple in this for shadows so we got the orange washes in. We pretty much finished the cherry tomato washes. We added the little green stems on the cherry tomatoes. They may be finessed, but I'm not sure. Kind of uh, worked a little bit on those leaves for the oranges. And let's walk back a little bit here. See if we can keep focus. So that's the way it looks at this point. It is, again, 14 inches high and 20 inches wide. So the next thing we're going to work on are those squash blossoms. This is what my palette looks like right now. And I got to tell you, I, I really don't deviate a lot uh, from my colors. I use the same basic ones. I did uh, deviate a little bit and use some yellow ochre. Uh, it's, I don't know, I just never warmed up to it for some reason. But then again, I found it worked nicely on these initial washes of the squash blossoms. And that's hard to say, squash blossoms. So here is the initial wash on these squash blossoms. And I used an interesting combination of uh, sap green and yellow ochre, uh, aurelian or aureolin. Uh, lemon yellow and a little bit of alizarin crimson and again these are just initial washes now you may say to yourself well that's really pretty it looks nice it's bright and colorful but I hesitate to leave it 
like this. I, it does not feel right to me. I need to add some values. I need to add some neutrals, some gray tones, a little bit of detail. So uh, your eye rests between all this intense chroma and intense color. And how am I going to do this? Well, as I look at the source, which I do look at occasionally, I see there's a lot of shadows here on these oranges. And right now, if you take a look, you'll notice these oranges are all pretty much in bright sunlight. So you add a little bit of shadow there. Uh, maybe on the tomatoes, intensify some of the tomatoes and bring some of the tomatoes back using colors and shadows. I need to add some values and darker greens on these onion tops, which I don't know if they're onion. I think they're onion, not leeks. The squash blossoms, these were tricky. I They're kind of weird to paint because I don't, I've never held one or actually worked with one in the kitchen. So I had to really look at the photograph at my source very carefully and try to determine what in the heck do these things look like. They look like blossoms of flowers that haven't opened or maybe are dying, I'm not sure which it is. There's a lot of um, possibility of darks, of shadows in these, of bringing some of the colors out, of setting some of the colors back, and this whole mess of carrot tops, these greens. Well, they certainly need to be filled in with color a lot uh, more dark values of greens, maybe a uh, burnt sienna uh, with an ultramarine blue to make a gray, maybe a sap green with an ultramarine blue to make a dark, dark green. And as you can see, it's pretty dark in there. I've got some leaks that I did not include in my sketch. Uh, so you do need some dark passages. You need some neutral passages. There's a lot of warm Warm color in this and to balance it out. I need some cool color Also, I need to start thinking what am I going to do in that white area behind those oranges and squash blossoms See this dark area here uh, so much dark and so much light and it's like just blobs of color or groups of color. And what I've been doing is working, let me pan over for you, uh, working on this. And I didn't want to make it overwhelming. So I just started adding more light values, medium values using sap green, um, aurelian. Uh, let's see, I made some dark green with sap green and ultramarine blue. And you may notice some purple down here. I've kind of decided to work with purple for that tabletop, and those shadows. So I put in some purple, and my purple is a blend of ultramarine blue, magenta, or you could do a blend with alizarin crimson, and then I throw in some burnt sienna. And I'm going to extend those purple shadows to some of these vegetables so they're not standing out there uh, without any shadow or a placement on that table. But I work considerably on the greens. I'm a little concerned <laughs> the greens are too much, so I probably will drop some shadows in there. Also, started putting some very light shadows with grays on these onions. And I knocked out, or I used, I shouldn't say knocked out, I used, used negative painting for the uh, onion strings that you have on the bottom of, of onions when you pull them out of the ground. So that's where we are at this point. And I may start integrating, but I have not, some of that purple-blue mixture back here, but I'm still debating about that. So the big job was these greens, adding some purple on the tabletop, and starting to add some shadows on those onions. I'm going to start looking at putting some color in this white area here and what I'm going to do I believe is take a pencil and outline lightly these areas before I start coloring them in. I just feel better about doing that 
rather than running into too much of the color that I already laid down. And again, I use just a plain old mechanical pencil uh, that I get anywhere, you know, at the drugstore, at the grocery store, nothing special, nothing fancy. Um, I don't know, it's a paper mate. This is not a commercial endorsement. And I'm going to take that and I'm just gonna outline these spaces just to make sure I don't run into them. Now, what colors am I going to use? This has a lot of warmth in it, which is great. I like it, I like it. It's lively, it's fresh, it's warm, it's morning light, uh, but I need a little contrast. I have some contrast down here with these uh, purple blue shadows. That's great, I'm gonna use them to do more shadows like I did here on these pearly onions. But uh, I need something that's a cooler color to offset all these warm colors. When I look at my original, uh, I see they have blue plastic bags. There's a guy with blue gloves there. There's some dark blues. I, the, those light blues really are appealing. And that looks like a cerulean blue, maybe some ultramarine and some brown. What I thought I would do is just diffuse it and put those colors in here. Uh, maybe an ultramarine, a cerulean, a little bit of green maybe, I don't know. So that's gonna be the next step because that white is really bothering me. Although I could be working on those other vegetables, I really wanna get rid of that white and put some color in there. I added a mixture of ultramarine blue, <laughs> cerulean, uh, let's see, what else did I use? I used, oddly enough, I used a Prussian blue. You can see it here in these dark areas, because uh, I wanted a little darkness. I, I, you could say it's the sky, you could say it's something else. I didn't want to put a lot of detail in here. I just wanted to balance the color. Uh, I also used some um, peacock or phthalo blue. Uh, I really liked this mixture here of the Prussian blue and the phthalo blue. And this is how it looks on, let's see if we can get some of this glare out of the way, on my palette. Uh, it's pretty dark. Um, the Prussian blue is a lot darker than I remember it being, but I did like it for shadows. I started uh, throwing it in here on these carrots. Now, one thing I did end up with is a blossom and a blossom is where you put color in or water before the paint has dried. That doesn't bother me I'm, because I might do some more passes. So this is how it looks in the fuller shot of the piece but it kind of balances my eye now and I can work with the other components of this painting. Before I do any more painting, I want to concentrate on a little bit of pencil work. And yes, you can draw over your watercolor with pencil, lightly. Uh, this basket area here uh, is kind of textureless. This one, eh, not that great. Uh, what I wanted to do is take a good hard look when I'm working on how I want to show the texture over here and there's a lot of it and I don't want to make it too too busy so I'm going to go ahead and take my mechanical pencil uh, and go ahead and just lightly sketch in a little bit of texture uh, you can see here I just started putting some on the outside of the basket and to see if I could with pencil give an idea of the texture and then decide how I want to do that with the watercolor. I went ahead and added some just very loose pencil lines to give an idea of a basket weave. And what I did is I added a lot of them and then I took an eraser and then I lifted a lot of them because it just looked too busy. So the next step is I'm going to try and maintain some of these lighter areas and I'm going to just start putting in some medium values. I'm probably gonna use a burnt sienna <clears throat> mixed with an ultramarine blue, and um, I'm gonna take my time with this because the chances of a mess up are very good for me.
Why is this upside down? Well, no, I haven't lost my mind, although I'm almost done with this and I kind of feel like I'm going a little crazy. Uh, it's just easier for me to paint that sky rather than having it all the way up here on my easel slash drafting table. So I just turned it upside down. I feel I can handle the paint more. And one of the tips about painting upside down is you can sometimes see really major errors that you might not have caught if it was right side up. And it's just a little trick to think about. Some people hold their work up to a mirror. Uh, I don't have one in here, so I do the upside down thing. And I added a wash of ultramarine blue on top of the sky, which is a cooler blue than say a cerulean or a thalo blue. I wanted to keep something in this painting a bit cooler than all the warm colors I have with the greens, the yellows, and the reds. So that's this step. We are almost done. Here is my completed painting. It is done as far as I know. I added some highlights here and shadows in those oranges and those leaves. I put paint down on the squash blossoms and I ended up lifting a lot of it because I didn't like it. It was not transparent enough. I wanted to show them to be more bright, more transparent as if the sunlight was coming through them. And I added some darks here and there to give it a bit of dimension. Let's see, I did a pass uh, with uh, the ultramarine blue on the sky because I wanted something, even though ultramarine can be warm and cool, I wanted a little bit more cool in this painting to offset all those warm colors. And lastly, I added some signage information. Now this is, I took this picture in Rome in an Italian market, so I wanted to keep it true to the pricing at that time. I'm sure prices have gone up since then. And I, the only problem is I couldn't figure out how much to put down for squash blossoms. So if anybody can tell me in euros how much squash blossoms cost, I would appreciate it. But uh, this is based on the prices that I could see from the photograph. And I just penciled them in initially and just took a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to get some dark in there to put the prices in. And also since the signage was pretty much white, I just did some um, gentle washes of uh, burnt umber uh, and burnt sienna and a little bit of purple here and there for shadow. So this is the almost completed painting. I will look at it again uh, over the next month or so. I did sign it already, uh, so that to me means it's pretty much done. But every once in a while, I find something that I don't like or I can tweak or fix. That's the uh, bad news about being an artist. So thanks for watching my journey with this. I hope it was helpful for you with your own work. I hope you learned something and uh, I appreciate you following and liking the channel. And always remember, above all, just keep practicing.